and welcome back, folks, to a special Let's Play 101st, The Airborne Invasion of Normandy. I am your host, SKS. This is going to be a very solemn and special Let's Play, for this game is not easy. It is very hard, very tedious, and it is very real life. Before I start to play, I thought as being an educator and, and loving social studies, I'd actually go into what the 101st is and why it is special in my heart. And it should be in everybody who's an American. And those who actually live in any of the European countries as well. The 101st Airborne, known as the Screaming Eagles, is a U.S. Army Infantry Division trained especially for air assault operations. During World War II, it was renowned for its action during the Normandy landings and during the Battle of the Bulge. Later in its usage in the military, the 101st Airborne in Vietnam was redesignated the 1st Air Mobile Division, and then later as an Air Assault Division. For historical reasons and because the Pathfinder Unit and Parachute Rigger Company are both still on jump status, it retains the Airborne Tab identifier to this day though it has, does not conduct parachute operations at any division level. Many modern members of the 101st are graduate of the U.S. Army Air Assault School and wear the Air Assault Badge, but it is not a prerequisite today like it was back then. The reason why the 101st is special to me is because the division headquarters are at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. They have served during World War II, Vietnam, Iraq, and also currently in Afghanistan. It is the only U.S. Army division with two aviation brigades. It is one of the most prestigious and decorated divisions in the entire United States Army. Knowing a little bit of facts about them, their motto, Rendezvous with Destiny, and that's exactly what they did in the airborne invasion of Normandy. Their mascot, as you can see at the top of the screen, is the bald eagle, a.k.a. O'Dave, as they call him. Just to give you a little backstory on this game, you pretty much choose a mission from some of the list of real missions that these men actually went through in World War II. And a lot of stuff can happen in this game, and we'll go into that, you actually pick your men, you equip them with what you think you'll need for that particular mission, and hopefully, through the grace of God, you've picked the right men, and they'll all make it out of the airplane when they jump. I've had games where I've had every single person land on the ground, and then I've had games where I've got three out of the plane, and it was hit by anti-aircraft guns and it killed the rest of the men in my squad. But just to show you how serious and give you a little background of the actual D-Day, I will read this little segment I found on the internet. The Pathfinders of the 101st Airborne Division led the way on D-Day and the night dropped prior to the invasion. Before our soldiers hit the beaches from many different countries, the Pathfinders were in the air, doing their duty. They left from a Royal Air Force base, base in North Witham. If I said that incorrectly, I'm sorry. They had trained there with the 82nd Airborne Division. The 101st Airborne Division's objectives were to secure the four causeway exits behind Utah Beach, destroy a German coastal artillery battery at St. Mary de Varville, Capture beer, nearby buildings believed to be used as barracks and a command post for the artillery battery of the Germans, and capture the Dwove River lock at Le Barquette, Barquette, excuse me, opposite Carrington. They also were to capture two footbridges spanning the Dove à la Porte opposite the Brevans, and destroy the highway bridges over the Dove at Saint Comdumont and secured the Dove River Valley. Again, I'm not French. You know my likeness of the French. I'm sure those were said incorrectly, but they had a lot of missions, and you could choose a lot of those in this game. Also, side missions in the process 
would include to disrupt German communications, establish roadblocks to hamper the movement of German reinforcements, establish a solid defensive line between the beachhead and clear the area of the drop zones to the unit boundary and link up with the 82nd Airborne Division and then eventually ground troops from the actual invasion on the beaches. They had no simple task in front of them. They had a lot to do. And that's why I've chose to play this game. Not because it's glorious, but because it shows you what happens. A lot of people played Silent Storm where it's kind of like going on secret missions but the realism is kind of down in this game if you get shot with an enemy in front of you you will die if you get shot and it grazes you your dude will bleed and he will bleed fast and if you don't get to him in time he will die with him right in front of you so I'm gonna go into this game and show you all a little bit about what you can actually do and you'll see how massive. So we'll choose new game. And here's the actual missions you can choose in the game. And you'll see that a lot of them are like the ones that I read from the little internet article. Ambush enemy units. Neutralize enemy air headquarters. Neutralize artillery guns. Neutralize anti-aircraft weapons. Destroy a railroad bridge. Destroy a fuel depot. Neutralize a German command post. Cut communication lines. And take control of a bridge. To be honest with you all, I played this game a lot when it first came out. I've successfully beat three of these missions. Three of the nine. I'm not going to tell you all which ones. I'm going to let you choose which missions you'd like to see me go on, or which mission. And the one with the highest votes is the one I will go on. So think very carefully about what you will see, because the difficulty of the mission you choose may actually be the calling card of it being a long LP, or a short LP, or even a failed LP. But just to go on into this, so you can see what else I'm going to let you all talk about and choose, I'm just going to pick Neutralize Enemy Headquarters. Now what this game does here is you have your briefing, uh, you can exit, and you can go to your mission map. Since we already chose our mission, we're locked in on it. You choose your mission map and you can actually look at the entire map. Your drop zone is right here. You're supposed to drop right on the objective. Over here would be the river. And you don't really have much. What's going to happen normally is you will land somewhere away from your drop zone. Say you land up here. You have to regroup with those guys on your screen and try to make it to the drop zone, to the primary objective. Sometimes you get lucky, and you will land right here. Sometimes you will land way over here, off of this entire map. And in that case, you're pretty much lost. And you pray to God that you can find one of these roads, so you can go north or south, and hope that you find something that looks recognizable. Sometimes you don't, and you'll wander off forever something to think about. It's what the real men faced. Mission briefing on this one, I'll read that for the mission you all choose, but as you can tell, it's pretty... It tells you everything that's going on and what to expect. So we'll exit out here, and you're here actually at the base. You have your armory, assembly area, airfield worry about the armory, assembly area, and airfield much later. Headquarters is where we were just at, just to show you that. And your quartermaster back here. After you pick guys, you can come in here and you gotta pick personal items, mess kits, jumpsuits, clothing, canteen, jump boots, pretty much everything you can think of. 
you have to figure out what your guys need when they jump. And just like in real life, you can only carry so much. Maps are always important. Never forget those. Or compasses. They will save your life. If we exit, I'll go over here and show you the armory as well. The armory is the same way. Handguns, your rifles, carbines, grins, bar, Thompsons, pretty much everything you can think of. Bazookas, different types, satchel charges, demolition charges, bazookas, it all depends on the type of mission that you choose, what you want to take with you. You can always go to the clipboard and get all, or standard issue. We won't do that. I'll personally sit down and think of what we need, based on what mission you pick, and what guys you kind of suggest. And you say, what are you talking about guys? Well, you have two bunkers here. You have the enlisted, and you have the officers. Let's actually go in here and meet these guys so you can see some of the people that you might want to see. You can only fit so many on the plane. If I go to the assembly area, what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Only 18 people can go with you. And it will determine, let me see if I can click here on the airfield. These 18 men will be listed up here, and you put them in the order that you want them to jump out of the plane. Say number three jumps, and the plane gets hit. Four through 18 will be lost, and you will not have access to them in the game. Like I said before, I've had everybody successful. Sometimes I've not been so lucky. Guys can jump out safely, be shot before they hit the ground. Sometimes they can hit the ground and break their legs. Sometimes they can get stuck in a tree and break their neck. Anything that faces these men in real life, you will face in this game. Something to think about when we get to the actual video where we order the guys. Do you want your officers to go first? Or do you want your grunts to go first, who actually carry most of the equipment? Let's go over here and we'll start with the officers' barracks. As you can tell, there's quite a few people. Only 18 can go. But we'll start over here with Harvey Kitchen. Most of these sorry ass kids couldn't give me 50 push ups when I got them. But look at them now. They're a force to reckon with, if I do say so myself. It tells you the years of service, a little bio, where they're from. He's from Rome, Georgia. His nickname's Cap. He's actually, you well, know, his rank. He's a captain. Tells you their age, their weight, their strength, everything they go. Just like a hardcore game. Cap worked his way up to the ranks from Sergeant. Although he's a tough disciplinarian, he expects 110%. The men respect him. He never asked them to do something that he doesn't do right along beside them. Next guy, Stan Johnson. You lazy SOPs. If they wouldn't court-martial me, I'd shoot every one of you. And that wouldn't take much effort. From Minnow, South Dakota. I'm not going to read all of these, but he believes that laziness is a crime and hounds the men relentlessly. You can pretty much get an idea of how these guys are just by listening, looking at their picture and telling what they do. Let's move on. Clark Edwards. I don't feel qualified to lead these men, but someone of importance does. I just pray I'll have the wisdom and courage to lead them well. Another big thing to look at, languages. He speaks French as well going into the French countryside like we are, that might be beneficial. Member officers are usually college educated, so they listen and they know this stuff. Alright, William Nolan. These men are my friends. I almost don't want to get to know anybody. They just might die. We all might. Again, pay attention to the rank. He speaks no special languages. And you just get a little sense of the character, and that comes from this middle part. Like his toughness is a 24. Maybe that, that's pretty low. Pete de Gaulle, guessing his French. I believe I can hold my own on the battlefield, but if I do die, I know I've served my country and my homeland in the highest possible way. Personal sacrifice. Second Lieutenant, Tarkio, Missouri. 
Nicknamed Frenchie. For reasons you can tell. Let's move on down to the next group. Art Baumgartner. I'm gonna kick some Nazi ass. Yeah! He's ready to go. Second Lieutenant. No extra languages. He's from Monument, Oregon. Nickname Ace. Dennis Peterson. The boys call me lucky. Because in 16 years of service, I've never once got as much as a splinter. And I've seen a lot of combat, too. So he speaks German, Master Sergeant, nickname Lucky. We'll go in there and win the whole damn thing by ourselves! Ernie Winchester. He played ice hockey. He's from Bad Axe, Michigan. Oh yeah. Five years of service. Years of service can mean a lot. Sam Purnell. I was wanting to fly on an airplane, but I never dreamed I'd get the chance. It's great. Staff Sergeant, Carson City, Nevada. That's the capital, in case you all didn't know. Nickname, Sammy. Ed Lawrence. We're a team. I trust each man here with my life. We just gotta knock them out. We just gotta do it for America. For America. He is from North Carolina. Fuque Varina. I guess that's how you say that. Sounds pretty tough to me. Philip Rogers. When you hit the drop zone, I don't want to see nothing but assholes and elbows till you're in the tree line. Rogers wants to see assholes and elbows. He's from Sundance, Wyoming. Nickname, Pappy. Glenn Carson. We've trained for this fight by God, and I'm ready. I'm a maniac. Let me at him. He is part American Indian. Nickname, Mo, from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And I love the 101 and the eagle on his face. Sal, and I can't read that yellow. I think this whole thing is stupid, and my guess is it probably could have been solved in negotiations. But I'm in this huge mess because my dad was a big army man and insisted I do my duty, and what a bunch of baloney. So nickname is Jumpy, and it was Mulehoff, Sal Mulehoff. Nickname Jumpy, he's a corporal. That's just a little bit above enlisted. I'll leave it at that. Burton Yates. I miss Mama's cooking. The food they've been giving us tastes like mud. Look at me, I'm losing weight. Nickname Bud, Corporal. Everyone has heard Bud's stories of his mama's biscuits and his daddy's sourwood honey. Bud is a slow moving. Bud is as slow moving as that honey until there's a fight. Then he kicks ass. Thomas Conan. When I hit the ground, there won't be any Nazis left alive. Big K is of German heritage and is ashamed of the Nazis and all that Hitler has done to the fatherland. He wants nothing more than to get on the battlefield and avenge his ancestry. His nickname, Big K. I love that. From Glen Ferry, Idaho. I'm a German descendant myself. I would have felt the same way. Dwight Lowe. When you fellas see Jerry's dying left and right, that's me mowing him down. Dwight is ready to kill people. His nickname is Dwight. Obviously, they put a lot of thought in that. He's from Defiance, Ohio. Neil Hubbard. My rifle and I can do some damage, you bet. From Woodhole, Woods Hole, Massachusetts. He speaks both French and German. Nickname, Neil. Again, no nickname. And last, Leva Leo Stubberfield. I'm ready to go. That's all he says. He's from Granite Falls, Minnesota. So that is y'all of your officers. I want you all to take a good long look. You might be sending some of these men to their death. Think about a couple that you would like to see go on as officers. Remember, I cannot take all officers. But a couple of them need to go to lead them in, give them high morale. Think about that. Post comments and let me know. Now that we've covered the officers, let's quickly go through the enlisted. There's a lot of enlisted men, so we're going to shoot through this fairly quickly. Because they're enlisted, they're grunts, you just need to know that. Peter McCurry. They're sending 101st because we're mean, that's a fact. Nicknamed Pee Wee from Milford, Delaware. I want to win the heart of Rosie the Riveter. Charlie Adams, nicknamed Chuck from Wahoo, Nebraska. Private first class. Frank Barnes. You don't think bullhorns will hook? You just hide in the bushes and watch. 
Put that in your book. He's from Sweetwater, Texas, if you could not tell. Dick Manley. What a name. Dick Manley. My girl back home thinks I'm a hero. Gotta live up to that. He's from Mount Hope, West Virginia. Brinker Smith. Well, my uncle relied on me to keep the fields and to go hunting in winter. I reckon he'll be alright, though. He's from Red Oak, Iowa, nicknamed Brinker, which is his name, Brinker B. Again, you all can read the bios and look at the stats. Let's go up here, TJ Morrison. I'm here to do one job and one job only. Send those damn crowds to hell. He's from Natchez, Mississippi. And TJ is ready to kick some Nazi ass. William O'Brien. My daddy always said, Son, always be loyal to God and country. If you ever have the chance to do your duty in war, make me proud, boy. He's from Kissimmee, Florida. Nickname, Red. Louis Kamarik. I'm here to my own choice to do my part and to stop the destruction of Europe and to end Hitler's reign in Germany. He is from Reform, Alabama. Frederick Arnold. I never thought I'd be at war. I just never thought it would happen to me. One minute I'm caring for the crops, and the next, I'm training up on how to kill and not get killed. Twist of fate, I tell ya. Twist of fate. He is from Effingham, Illinois. Nickname, Fredo. Paul Murphy. We all have different backgrounds and reasons for fighting, but we're gutsy men and we'll pull through. He's from Mars Hill, Maine. Fish got his nickname because he worked on his father's fishing boat in Maine before enlisting. Alright, let's move to the next set of guys. Denny Ray. I'm gonna meet me some French mademoiselles as long as I'm there. Nickname Hollywood? You would think he's from there, but no, he's from Mark Tree, Arkansas. Norm Ward. One thing's for sure, I'm the best man in this unit and I'm not afraid in the least. Buck is from Tucson, Arizona, and awful proud of himself. Russ Andrews. I wouldn't have withdrawn from the pre-med curriculum in college if I didn't believe that what Hitler is doing here is ethically unallowable. Notice he said pre-med. Russ is from Shelby, Montana. Maybe something to think about. Edward Hans. Basically, I'm a good guy. I don't want to hurt nobody. I'm here to fight and then go home. I'm not in the Army Pride and all that. Edwards from Junction City, Kansas. Wally Campbell. So far, Germany's been a tough nut to crack. But now I like sending in the big guns. Screaming Eagles. I'm keyed up. He's from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Nickname, Cam. Toughness of 31. Notice this weight down here. It says explosives and bazooka. He can carry that. That's something to go back and look at when you're looking through the videos if you want to make a list. Go from Wally to Angus, Angus Garvey. Broads and wine, Mac. Broads and wine. Broads and wine. Angus is from Crest Butt, Colorado. I know it's Butte, but it's funnier as Butt. Again, he can carry explosives, not a bazooka. Tom Swenson. When you fellas see Jerry's dying left and right, that's me mowing him down. Nicknamed Slim from Moab, Utah. Weight, none. He cannot carry anything special. Vincent Minor. Men, we're gonna kick some ass and take some names, and I'm killing the first crowd of the day. He's from Berlin, New Hampshire, nickname Vinny. Harold Hodgins. If I die, I hope it will be fast. Harv the Grace, Maryland, nickname Hal. Scrolling so over, Jack Stewart. I was born to fight this war. Nickname Stu, he's from Streeter, North Dakota. Joe Murray. Hey Eisenhower, name the place and I'll personally deliver Hitler's head. Nicknamed Joe Camel. Generate, Louisiana. He speaks both French and German. Anthony Frazagilo. Frazagilio. I grew up in Hell's Kitchen. I think I can handle Nazi-occupied Europe. You heard it here first, gamers. Hell's Kitchen, New York is just like Nazi-occupied 
France. Nickname, Tony. Walter Schmidt. I'll argue with any man that says Ike isn't the toughest commander we've had. He's acted with judgment, force, and honor from the start. Walt is from Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Dirk Lewandowski. My father was a military man back in the old country. Poland, that is. He's extremely proud of what America stands for in this conflict. This man will be going on the trip because his nickname is Izzy and he's from Mammoth Falls, Kentucky. That Tucky pride, he'll be taking it with him. Ted Underwood. <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy. Most men are afraid of me because at any moment I just might go berserk. You can never tell. <laughs> Ted's nickname is Tick. I think you can figure out why. He's from Walla Walla, Washington. Bazooka and explosives expert. Gus Cooper. To hell with a rifle. Just get me close enough to cut their throats. Coop is from Romantic, Connecticut. He likes knives. Lambert White. The Jerry's think we're psychopaths because we got shaved heads. <laughs> He's nicknamed Nails. Another Mohawk guy from Clifton Forge, Virginia. Gerald Trout. I can wrestle and hold tied Nazi just as easy as a cat. But you'll know something? I'm not sure how I'm gonna react under fire. Little hint there. His nickname's Jeb. He's from Humboldt, Tennessee, to my south. Larry Camwell. Being in the 101st is an honor. I'm proud to fight next to the bravest, craziest men that ever was. They were crazy, folks, to jump out of a plane in a dark space, not knowing where you're going to land. You think it's scary walking through your house in the dark? Try walking through a different country. He's from Mnuski, Vermont. And last but not least, Gene Neely. And I love his slogan. Screaming Eagles. Gene's nickname is Chief. He's from Wargan Mound, New Mexico. He is a Pawnee Indian. In most situations, he'd fight a man for calling him that. So there you have it. That is all your enlisted soldiers. We already went through the officers. I want you all to take that with you. Remind yourself what, get, what mission you'd like to go through or have me try to go through. I've showed you the people. You can rewind it back. I'll take care of the armory and uh, equipping the soldiers. Let me go back to the main menu here. Just remember, here's your missions you can choose. So remember, give me a mission you'd like to see, most votes to win, and then give me a couple of people, two to three people. Let's make it two. Two people you'd like to see go that you think would be beneficial. Ambush enemy units, neutralize enemy headquarters, neutralize artillery, neutralize anti-aircraft, destroy railroad bridge, destroy fuel depot, neutralize German command, cut communication lines, and take control of a bridge. The mission and the people are mostly up to you gamers. Choose wisely. The invasion of Normandy will cost lives. Let's hope the person you choose to go in your place will not die. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the 101st Airborne Invasion of Normandy. This is SKS signing off. Have a great night and let me know what you think. Night gamers. <laughs>